There is a tunnel under the old railroad tracks just to the west of the Queen Elizabeth Way Niagara Falls. It is known locally as the Screaming Tunnel. A path wanders through the tunnel and then up to an empty field on the hill. But the field was not always empty. At one time, a large farmhouse stood in the field at the top of the hill and in it lived a happy family. Then one night, the house caught fire. A young daughter was trapped in the house and the only way to escape was through a wall of flames. The brave young girl covered her face with her arms and ran into the fiery doorway. Her long hair and her long nightgown began to smolder as she burst through the flames and rushed out of the house. When the night air struck her smoldering clothing, it burst into flames, enveloping the girl in a raging inferno. The girl screamed in agony and ran blindly down the hill, away from the fire-stricken house. She staggered into the tunnel under the train tracks, her screams echoing and Ray echoing through the night. Overcome by the flames, the girl fell to the floor of the tunnel, wailing in agony. She rolled frantically on the floor of the tunnel, trying to douse the flames, but her efforts were weak and ineffective. She was quickly overcome and burned to death in the tunnel under the tracks. After that night, anyone that dares strike a match in the tunnel under the tracks will hear the agonized death screams of the burning girl, and a ghostly wind will instantly blow out the match. One night, a young girl named Inezka picked up the phone and called her best friend, Claudie. My parents are going out tonight, said Inezka. Can you come around 10 o'clock? That's great, replied Claudie. I'll bring the book with me. Bye. Inezka put the phone down and went to her bedroom to prepare for the evening. The two girls were planning something very dangerous. Both of them had always been interested in black magic and the occult. Only a few days before, Claudie had found something very interesting at the local rubbish dump. It was a large, heavy book, bound in leather and filled with countless pages of archaic writing. It was not just any book. This book contained instructions on Satanism, devil worship, arcane occult rituals, and how to cast black magic spells. For Anezka and Claudie, the idea of being able to cast spells was very She attractive. staggered into the tunnel under the train They had the been dying tracks. to try it for some time. Her screams echoing when Claudie and Ray echoing the through the book. night. The two Overcome girls by decided the flames. to follow the instructions the girl fell and to the attempt floor to summon the, the devil to wailing do their in agony. Shortly after Inezka's parents went out that night, Claudia arrived. It was a few minutes after 10, and the girls climbed the stairs and went to Anika's room. They were shaking with anticipation. Following the instructions in the book, they closed the windows and pulled the shades so that the room was in complete darkness. In the middle of her bedroom, Anezka had set up a little wooden table. Round it, she placed lighted black candles. Claudia laid the open book on the table. The girls sat across from each other and joined hands. Staring into the book, they began to read in unison. In the name of Satan, ruler of the earth, the king of the world, who commands the forces of darkness, we beg you to put your infernal power in our hands. Spread wide the gates of hell and come forth from the abyss to greet us as a brother and a friend. A light breeze blew through the room and the girls exchanged worried looks as they continued. Grant us the power that we seek. Grant us the pleasures that we seek. Indulge our every whim and make our dreams come true. We invoke your name and demand that you show yourself. We renounce God and worship only you, O Prince of Darkness, you who reward evil and punish goodness. Hear our plea. The gust of wind grew stronger and shook the room, even though the windows were all closed. Claudia was trembling. She tried to let go of her friend's hand, but Danesca held her tight and continued chanting. By all the demons of hell, we demand that all the things we mention shall come to pass. We speak your name. A cold wind began turning the pages of the boat. Claudia broke away from Anezka's grasp. Then, as if on cue, the wind ceased and the book abruptly snapped shut. Both girls screamed in fright. 
This is too much, Aneka, cried Claudie. I'm going home. I'm afraid. I don't like this. I'm scared too, Claudie, Aneska replied. But isn't this what we wanted? What we planned? After all, it was working. If... If you didn't pull your hand away, we might have made contact. I don't want to do this anymore. Claudie whined. It was fun in theory, but I never believed any of it was real. I've got a bad feeling about this. I'm going home. It's over. Bye, Aneska. See you tomorrow. And what about the boat? Aneska demanded. You can keep it, replied Claudie. I don't want it anymore. Claudie grabbed her coat and made her way downstairs to the front door. Aneska followed her, begging her to stay, but she refused. She did not have far to go, just down the street, past the pond and she would be home. Aneska said goodbye and shut the front door. Then, she went slowly back to her room, turned on the light and blew out all of the candles. She opened the curtains and placed the satanic book beside her bed. She lay down and looked at the clock. It was 11. She closed her eyes and fell asleep. Claudie was hurrying towards her home. As she passed the pond, she felt something behind her and spun around. There was nobody there, but she felt as if she was being watched from afar. Scared, she screamed with horror. That night, Aneska had a very disturbing dream. She saw Claudie lying in a ditch near the pond. Her head was resting at an odd angle, and there were bruises around her neck. Aneska woke up in a panic and screamed out for her father. He rushed into her room and tried to comfort her. Relax girl, he said in a soothing voice. It was just a bad dream. Go back to sleep. In the morning you will have forgotten all about it. Please, dad, she cried. Can I sleep with you and mom tonight? I don't want to be here alone. Please? Well, okay. Come on then, her father, replied, as he took the frightened Aneska in his arms and hugged her tightly. She looked at the clock. It was almost 2 a.m. Just then, the phone rang. Aneska picked it up and heard a faint voice on the other end. It was Claudie. Beware Aneska. Be very careful, or what happened to me will happen to you as well. That was the only thing she heard before the line went dead. Claudie. She screamed desperately. Claudie. Calm down, Aneska, said her father. What happened? I don't know, Dad, she replied. I don't know, but I'm afraid. I'm afraid for my life. Aneska was overcome by fear and desperation and began to cry. Don't worry, said her father as he rubbed her shoulders. Go to sleep and tomorrow, you'll see, everything will be okay. He took Aneska to his bedroom and she lay down in the bed between her father and mother. Soon, she fell into a peaceful sleep. In the morning, her father was awoken by the terrified screams of his wife. Opening his eyes, he was horrified to see his daughter lying dead beside him. Aneska's body was stiff and her throat was black and blue. She had been strangled. He began to scream and cry. Hours later, Claudie's lifeless body was discovered in the ditch near the pond. She had also been strangled. Police estimated her time of death as being around 11.15 p.m. the night before.